everybody I'm Rachel from Rachel cooks with love in today's video I'm gonna be making some delicious carne guisada the way I've had it my whole life Tex-Mex style it's a classic dish easy and delicious let's get started so I'm gonna start out by preparing my meat now I've got a three pound chuck roast now I like to use chuck roast because it's a type of meat that you can cook long and slow and this meat is perfect like for beef stews, which is what carne guisada is. It's a Mexican beef stew-like dish. I'm going to cut it up into small pieces, just kind of like bite-sized pieces. Not too big and not too small. You see? Bite-sized pieces like this. You don't want real clunky pieces. And if you see some fat on it, like it's got over here, you can remove that. It does have a good amount of marbling in it, which is perfect. But if you see an excess amount, you want to take that off. So I'm done cutting my meat. So now that I've got it all cut up, we're ready to go to the stove. So I'm going to be using this stainless steel brazier. And I've got my heat set between medium and high. Now you want it pretty hot because I'm going to be searing my meat. And I'm going to add some vegetable oil in here let me see i think this is a good amount right here and you want it nice and hot because you want to sear the meat you don't want to crowd it see because then it'll get steamy on you now you may feel like you want to lower the temperature but don't lower the temperature just leave it like that I'm going to go ahead and flip them over, just like that, and I'm going to give them some room. So as you can see, it has seared really well. I'm going to go ahead and remove it and put it on this plate and set it aside, just like that, and I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more and do the same thing just like that I'll see if I can show you you see the fond that is forming at the bottom we like that because that's what's going to give this carne guisada a delicious taste so now I'm going to get this batch out. And I'm going to go ahead and add the last of the meat. Just like that. Flip it over as best as you can. So I'm going to get this batch out. You see how nice this looks? Now I'm going to lower the temperature down just a little bit to about medium. I'm going to add a little bit of oil. And I'm going to add my onions. I'll be posting all the amounts on the screen and I'm, I'm also going to put them below in the description box so you'll know exactly what I'm putting in here and how much. I've got my green onions. I like the combination of both. I'm going to move them around. Now these are going to release some liquid. And that's good because after a while, all these onions will be glazed, the, the fond at the bottom. And that's going to give us a delicious carne guisada taste. That's why you can see the onions changing to a light brown. Because that's the bottom, as you can see. See? Now I'm going to add my peppers. I've got some green bell peppers here. And I also have some yellow. I'm 
I'm going to stir them around like this. And I'm going to let them simmer like this on medium low until the onions get nice and translucent. So while my onions are sauteing on low, I'm going to go ahead and grind my spices. See? I've got cumin and peppercorns in here. And I'm going to go ahead and grind these up. Now, if you don't want to use the fresh stuff, you can go ahead and use powdered cumin and you can use regular pepper. But I like to grind my spices fresh because I think that this gives the dish a very authentic taste. I wouldn't prepare carne guisada without freshly ground cumin and pepper. So we've got the cumin and the peppercorns nice and ground as you can see them. See? Now I'm going to add my garlic. I've got three big garlic cloves in here. I cut them up into pieces so that they'll be easy to grind, like this, see, and I'm going to go ahead and grind these up too. I like to use plenty of garlic in this dish because this is what's going to give the carne guisada its authentic taste. So I've got my garlic really, really smashed up in here, as you can see. I'm going to go ahead and add one cup of water. And I'm going to bring it in together really good like this. Okay, now that I've got it all together just like this, see? Now we're ready to take this to the stove. So I've got my morcajete with my spices ready. Now I've had this simmering on low so that the onions and the peppers could get translucent really nice. As you can see, look at the fond at the bottom. It's already deglazing really beautifully in here. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my flour. Now the flour is going to be what is going to give us that beautiful gravy. So I'm going to put my flour in a little bit at a time like this. See? I'm going to raise the temperature to about medium. And I'm just going to be moving it around like this so that we can toast this flour really nicely like that. This dish is very similar to my pork chops and gravy. I'm going to go ahead and put the link above so that you can see that. I make it very, very much like this. See? So I'm going to add the rest of the flour. And I'm going to continue to move it around like this until it gets real nice and toasty. So I've been stirring this around and everything is nice and toasted as you can see. You see the bottom? All this is going to get deglazed when we add our liquids. So I'm going to go ahead and add all my mixture from the molcajete. See? And I'm going to add a little bit more water. Half a cup. Bring it in together. And I'm just going to move it around like this and deglaze the bottom. This is going to be our beautiful gravy. And it already smells delicious with all those spices in there. See? Can you see the bottom? Now I'm going to go ahead and add all my meat. See how nice and seared it is? Now we're going to add it back. Just like this. And bring it all in together. Now I've got all my tomatoes. I'm going to add my tomatoes in here. See? I'm going to add my chili powder. And I'm going to add my tomato paste. Just like that. Now I'm going to bring this in together.
Oh, this is looking beautiful. I'm going to add some water. I've got one cup. And I'm going to go ahead and add my chicken bouillon. And I'm going to bring this in together like this. It's starting to get a beautiful color. Now I'm going to keep the temperature like that at a low boil for about 45 minutes. Now I haven't added any salt yet because I did add the chicken bouillon. I'm going to go ahead and replace the lid. And I'm going to let it cook like that for about 45 minutes. And then we'll be adjusting the salt when we come back. Now it's been cooking like this for 45 minutes. So let's take a look at it. Oh, look at this. See how beautiful this looks? Mm. See? Now I'm going to go ahead and taste it. Now the reason I wait 45 minutes before I add my salt is because I want to make sure that the chicken bouillon that I added in there has enough time for it to really dissolve itself and really give us the true taste of what it's going to do. So now I can go ahead and taste it and see just how much salt I need to add. I usually add about a teaspoon. We'll see. Yep, it needs about a teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my salt. You go ahead and adjust it with as much salt as you like. It could be a little bit less for you. Now I usually put in about a teaspoon. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a good stir like this. Let that salt come in together really nicely. And it's starting to look so good, look at that. As you wanna continue tasting it, like every 10 or 15 minutes and adjusting. It's better for you to add your salt slowly, a little bit at a time than to add too much and then you can't take it out. I think that's going to be perfect for me. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the lid. And I'm going to let it continue cooking like this. We want to make sure that this meat is just literally falling apart. We can't hurry it up. Carne guisada is low and long. So we're going to give it about 45 minutes. And then we'll be back. Ooh, my carne guisada is ready. It's still sizzling hot. Look at that. Look at this. Mm. You know that we just can't have any main dish without our beans and our rice. It just goes perfect together. So I'm going to go ahead and serve me some here. Oh, this carne guisada is like, just like falling apart. Mm. Traditionally, we always eat tortillas with our carne guisada, whether they be flour or corn tortillas. I'm gonna go ahead and put a link above here for my tortillas if you're interested in the video. We usually make a taco with our carne guisada. You don't have to make a taco, but that's just the way I like it. <laughs> and I should have smeared the beans first, just like this. Mm. See? Now for the taste test. A little bit of rice. Mm. This carne guisada is heavenly. If you like my video, give me a thumbs up. Send me a comment and tell me what you think. Share with your friends.